Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. Extra amazing because Crystal's back. What do we have, Crystal? <laughs> Indeed we do. It is nice to be back. I missed you guys while I was gone. Um, we've got Zed Jelani in the show with a very innovative idea for how to get people to take the vaccine. We've got Joseph Shepard. He's the founder of a new group called United Rural Dems of America, talking about whether Democrats actually even care about winning rural America at this point and how they may be able to start to regain some ground there. We've got a great panel, Don Calloway, Marshall Kosloff, but we wanted to start with whatever is going on down in Georgia. There's a lot going on down in Georgia. The president was there over the weekend, says he won, but paradoxically also encouraging people to go out and vote. Contra to Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood, trying to undo some of the damage that they did down there. Let's take a listen. Thank you very much, and thank you, Melania. And I want to say, hello, Georgia. We did a great job. You know, we won Georgia, just so you understand. Okay. Because we've been talking about this a lot over the last couple of weeks, and largely where it is, is that is all of the election fraud claims going to undermine Republican performance in Georgia? And there's kind of two different things that we can see here, which is that first and foremost, obviously, diehard Trump supporters, we play, there was this amazing clip of Ronna McDaniel, the GOP chairwoman, down in Georgia that we played last week, where she's like trying to encourage people to go out and vote. And they're mm -hmm. like, why should I vote? The election is decided. It's rigged. And she's like, no, there's a... I haven't seen evidence. Uh, and she's like completely stumbling over herself. These people are out for blood. I mean, rightfully, they believe, right? You know, like if, if in terms of what they believe, like that's a logical question to ask. So they have no idea how to address this stuff. Then you have Lynn, Lynn Wood and Sidney Powell, who they empowered, drawing crowds of thousands of people being like, we're not going to vote. Sidney Powell straight up being like, do not vote. And then um, now there's this like wow. anti sydney backlash, but people are still pushing fraud claims like Newt Gingrich and all of them. Right. Everybody jumping out. President ultimately having to go down there and bail them out. But I see it two ways. It's not just the Trump supporters. There were hundreds of thousands of people on the ballot in Georgia who did not vote for Trump, but did vote for Loeffler and Purdue yeah. because they're more like centrist, you know, suburban white largely around right. Atlanta. Right. Those are the exact type of people who are going to be like, you know what? This stuff is bat shit crazy. And I'm not going down this road. That's so I think point. it's a dual pronged problem whenever they're going to have to, so whenever they're trying to drive turnout in this election. I mean, I guess there's two schools of thought. First is the one you're articulating, yeah. which is like the very straightforward analysis of you have people who are trusted by at least some part of the GOP yeah. base who are saying, don't bother voting, it's rigged, exactly. your vote's not gonna count, so don't show up, don't take the time, don't turn in your ballots, all of that stuff. And by the way, let's keep in mind that Trump may well have lost Georgia because of all his claims about mail-in voting fraud. Very, very that, I mean, with that narrow of a margin, you had a lot of people, a decent number, tens of thousands, who voted in the primary for Trump and did not vote in the general election, but they voted by mail in the primary. So those claims of fraud may have already undermined him in the state. So let's use that as backdrop. But yeah, the straightforward analysis is they're telling people not to vote, so people are going to be like, why bother? On the other hand, it's possible that the idea that it's rigged may encourage people like we've got to show up yeah. and we've got to win by a large margin in order to be able to make this thing count. So, look, I mean, I think going into these elections, you and I both felt like this is going to be tough for Democrats. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be really hard for them to pull that off. Republicans are doing everything they possibly can to give Democrats yeah. a shot. I still think they're going to win. Look, yeah, to be and, clear. and like, yeah, like, look, and we're going to play, I'll play in yeah. just a second, um, Kelly Loeffler at the debate last night. Like, this is the worst candidate I have ever seen. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Like, I hadn't really watched her that much, and I was stunned by, you can't even say she's like the least charismatic, it's anti-charisma. I'm really like floored that such a human being exists who is so lacking in any personality or compelling characteristic whatsoever. Not to mention the stock trades for her. Not to mention Purdue, who didn't even bother to yeah, debate. Won't even debate. Probably because he doesn't want to answer all the questions of that Ryan Grimm's mm -hmm. been unearthing about all of the incredible corruption and use of his position of power and insight in that office in order to personally gain, which is absolutely disgusting. So you have two terrible candidates. You have people running around saying, don't even bother it's rigged and doing everything they can basically to try to hand this election to the Democrats. Let's take a look at Ms. Loeffler last night when she got asked a question about whether or not Donald Trump won the state of Georgia. Yeah, my, my question is actually pretty simple. Uh, yes or no, Senator Loeffler, did Donald Trump lose the election? 
You know, President Trump has every right to use every legal recourse available. In our own state, we've seen time and again that we have investigations that need to be completed. In fact, we've run two audits, and those audits discovered thousands of ballots across several counties here in Georgia that were not counted. I've called for a signature audit. We need to hold folks accountable involved in these investigations to make sure that they move more quickly because everything's at stake on January 5th for the future of our country. So oh. she gets asked a simple yes or no question. Right. And can't do it. And right. cannot. And her, I mean, it actually reminds me of when Allison Lundergan Grimes ran against Mitch McConnell mm -hmm. in Kentucky. And she got asked a very simple question. Did you vote for Barack Obama or not? I remember that. And she yeah. couldn't. She tried to spin and let right. me go over here. My vote's private, et cetera, et cetera. Just First lie. of all, yeah. everyone knew. <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone knew that she voted for Barack. She should have just admitted it and moved on. And it's the same thing here. Look. Donald Trump lost the state of Georgia, even, and you know that. Like, you're not an idiot. You know it. You've looked into it. They haven't proven anything worthwhile in court. Just admit it and move on. But here she gives this answer that's going to be unsatisfactory to literally everyone. Right. And, you know, David Perdue was even caught on a secret audio or whatever in a phone call admitting that but, uh, Trump had lost the state of Georgia and lost the election. And there's a lot of this that's going on right now. She's in a tough spot. And this is what I mean, where I think it's what, where it's designed in order to suppress votes in those two directions, to Trump supporters themselves who think that the election is stolen, and then to suburban whites who voted Republican down ticket but did not vote at the very top. I just don't see how they're going to be able to come across. And she is leaning so hard into the socialism sucks like type argument. We're going to play that later in the show. It's extraordinarily cringe to watch her, <laughs> um, the way that she's going. Every answer was Every like answer, radical, radical liberalism. liberalism. I'm like, okay. I'm like, what is this? I mean, again, look, maybe like character assassination, time, you know, honored part of politics. But if you got to do it, you got to do it correctly. And he just doesn't seem like that person that they're trying to p paint him as. Maybe it'll work. Worked for Trump in some respects with the 2020 election. But but I'm very, very dubious of some of this stuff. And at the same time, just you know, to go to show how all of this is going for Trump, I think they're one in 43 currently in court. Rudy Giuliani has Glad contracted you've been keeping coronavirus. That tally while yes, I was away. I've been keeping the, the running tally. <laughs> I've got one in the office. But Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> The news broken by Trump there on Twitter. He's tested positive. Apparently, um, you know, it's, it's not he's in a bad way. Yeah, it's so a pretty serious case. It seems him, like you know, he's in the hospital right now. Wish him the best. But this goes to show whenever you've got your lead lawyer and really the person who is spearheading this right at the time to right now is December 7th. Electoral College meets exactly one week from today in order to certify the election results. California over the weekend became the last state in the union in order to certify its election results, making it like I guess semi-official and the last line of defense is January 6th U.S. Congress certifies the election results. We've got I think currently only one or two Republican congressmen, House representatives who say they're going to try and challenge those results. Doesn't mean anything unless they even get a senator and even then doesn't mean all that much. So look it's generally over and I, you know Trump has put himself in a very tough position here within Georgia because if those seats do go blue I think he's going to get 100 percent of the blame. Again, he unlikely, it. but like you said, they are putting themselves in a situation where it is ex it is becoming much more likely than I thought it would be at the beginning. Yeah, they're, they're keeping this in play when it really actually shouldn't be. Yeah. Um, because I, I do think that there's a, you know, there's a large sentiment in Georgia of like, there's a lot of people in the country who feel like, oh, let's have divided government because that'll people be like a it. good thing. A lot of people like, I mean, I, I personally it. think uh, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I think you should be able to, you know, the party in power should right. be able to pass their agenda and people can decide and they can go in another direction if it doesn't work out. But there are a lot of people who have this feeling of, like, let's have a check on the Democratic presidency. But, yeah, I think Trump and co. are doing everything they can to put this in play. And, and the other thing I'll say just again to candidate quality, this is like, especially the Loeffler-Warnock um, race is like a, a pilot or like a test of whether candidate quality actually matters mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. Because Reverend Warnock is very talented, very charismatic, he's obviously a preacher, so he's got he's incredibly effective on the stump, he's very effective in the debate last night, thinks fast on his feet, like, you know, has charm and appeal, and as we played, she has, like, negative on all of those qualities. Not to mention is the richest member of all of Congress, completely, out, like, wildly out of touch, doesn't know how to answer basic questions, is so obviously just, like, reciting the talking points she's memorized from her consultant. 
consultants. So if candidate quality matters at all, <laughs> you would think that Warnock would have a shot in that race. I'm just not sure that, especially in a race like this that's been so nationalized, that it actually does I don't think it matters. And uh, that's sad truth. I actually think Nate Silver did an analysis on this before the election of how candidate quality has been declining over time in terms of its importance over the last 25 years because of rank partisanship. I think it's the same thing. I mean, look, Ossoff, everything's nationalized. Ossoff is also so boring. Oh, he's it's a, like unbelievable. total cookie cutter. Yeah, uh. Like, you could not find a more just like generic <laughs> yeah. cookie cutter <laughs> candidate. Again, like reading the talking yeah. points off the sheet. So, and look, Purdue's not like a stump genius or whatever in terms of the long vein of Georgia politics. So overall here, you know, not the best our country has to offer, but <laughs> probably what we deserve. So. All right. We're going to tell you what's on our radars. That's next.